All right, recording it started. I'm gonna sneak my way into the RCC chat. Hello, hello. Good hey. morning, everybody. Happy holidays, everybody. SGP, Czar, Cashman. Good to see some some familiar faces. Yeah, man. How about that's? I never noticed. I guess that. New Year's Day is exactly one week after Christmas, basically. You've never noticed that? No, nah, not really. Like, I've had no really reason to notice that until I had a commitment on both days that I didn't do. Well, that's what happens when you haven't had a job in however many years. <laughs> hey, easy, easy. Wait, oh, I'm still in the voice, right? Yeah, you're good. Oh, this is your last notification for the cryptocurrency events. If you want to continue <clears throat> receiving them, it must be an opt-in alert. Yeah, man, I saw that. Alerts opt-in. I made sure people right. knew what was going on. It's a nice turnout. I'm happy right. to see this. Good, good, good. I, I can't quite see how many people are in the chat, so you let me know when we're, right. we should get started. So, just so everybody's Sorry kind about of my caught audio, up. guys. Uh, we're we're playing with a handicap today. It's just me and Brent. Um, his... And my internet's out, so I have to do this on my phone. Yeah, it's it's going to be great as always, but I'm I'm going <laughs> to have to take that. the reins a little more than normal, and that is not going to be a problem. Do got some fun stuff to talk about though. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit of a lively discussion about a few things. Yeah, let's, let's, let's actually plant some seeds. Let's plant some seeds real quick. Basically. I'm, I'm, do we want to talk about like the, the, the censorship Jordan Peterson slash Coinbase stuff first, or do we want to talk about the Ethereum classic? Uh, attack? That's a good question. Let's see here. So I definitely want to keep the bullish or bullshit at the end. I like it there. Um, we could start off with Ethereum classic. Cause I actually have a lot of questions about that. I'm probably not going to, have a lot to add, but if, I'm sure you've done some research on it. That's probably a good place to start. We I did what I could. Yeah, 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 that was coming out yesterday, and my internet's been dead, so it's not like I could look at what the uh, what any of the developments were today. But I don't, I don't expect anything specific to happen today. So, all right, let's lead off with that. Uh, that way, we have kind of our. It is the big story of the last couple of days for sure. So, um, so very quick, the Ethereum Classic chain has been hit with a 51 percent. oh wait we didn't say we are Let's say we are before we get too crazy this here. is gonna be the official start of the show okay i'm mike i'm here with All my right. friend brent this is the crypto basic podcast uh, we're a little rusty we haven't been here in a couple weeks because of the holidays but we're trying to show up every tuesday at 11 a.m eastern time sit here with you guys for an hour sometimes our third host will be with us kareem really we just want to catch you up on all the news and updates for the week in the r cryptocurrency subreddit Sometimes, you know, we have a little more stories like today. I think we have some good conversation coming other times There's some memes that you know, we're gonna get some laughs out of but you know It's up to you guys the more you upvote inside the community the more likely we are to talk about the story and we're just you know trying to Deliver all the things that matter And if you want to jump into our podcast, we just released an episode uh, today well last night really called the crypty awards or the crypties and uh, There's there's some fun awards given out. We gave out Good awards for like our favorite projects, and we also gave out awards like the biggest douche in the cryptoverse. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, all right, let's do it. Uh, Ethereum Classic. So, Ethereum Classic last night, uh, we became aware of this that they were they were hit with a 51% attack. That so, 51% attack, uh, real quick. I'm not sure, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people know what this is already, but I'm just gonna explain it is when somebody has more than half of the hash power and they're acting uh, in such a way that it is detrimental to the network and they're trying to do something wrong. So they are actively trying to do a double spend. So they will make a deposit onto an exchange and then they will replace it with a new uh, set of the chain that doesn't have that deposit. So they basically get the money for free. Um, and they have done this with at least two exchanges that I was aware of before we went to sleep last night. <clears throat> Coinbase got hit with a $500,000 double spend. Um, they have not said whether they're going to be covering those funds yet, I don't think. 
Um, and Gate.io was also hit. They hit 40,000 Ethereum Classic, which would have been around a hundred and what, hundred and forty thousand dollars or something like that. I, I'm not sure what the price is. Um, there, so they are. They have also already said that they are covering the attack. So this is interesting because the uh, Mike throw up the um, the Reddit post there. Oh, the this. Yeah, I'm, I'm already in missing this it. particular missing subreddit. In, in in this subreddit, our cryptocurrency apparently there's a pretty negative opinion on Ethereum Classic. At least the opinion in the in this particular thread. The thread was just a lot of people saying like, ah, it's it's a shit coin. It needs to die. Um, this is all. This was always going to happen. This is good. You know, their their network wasn't good enough to sustain a 51% attack. Here's the thing about networks not being good enough to sustain a 51% attack. Almost none of them are. So. If you're not talking about literal Bitcoin or actual Ethereum, most of these chains are vulnerable, and they're vulnerable for an, enough money that they could. Um, you know, I'm saying most most is accurate, not most of the top chains, but uh, but especially a lot of the ones on the older algorithms where you could buy hash power from like the Ethereum network just literally purchase it and point it is um is where you've got that problem so uh last week there were or maybe two weeks ago there were these douchebags that took over their their github they took over the ethereum classic github like they got one guy to to make them in or they they made this one guy an admin and then the guy like kicked everybody else off of admin and he's like ah this is mine now and it reminded me of like the old days of IRC when I used to trick people into doing that in channels and then ban them all. Um, I was Least 12, surprising story which, of this entire speech. <laughs> yeah, so that's approximately the age I imagine the people who took over the Ethereum Classic GitHub, GitHub a couple weeks ago were. And I don't know if it was the, the same group, but it's interesting that there's some serious material out there. There's certainly My, uh, some circumstantial evidence here that is is at least eyebrow raising and concerns it's you know a, a very like internal like conflict where they had to completely move an entire github to a new address or or look wherever the exact term is used for the github but like they basically it didn't affect the theorem classic at all but basically they're like okay fine you can just have that we're just gonna have to move all these files to a new place like okay you got us like that was you know very childish i thought but it didn't really affect the network i just wonder how much further those actors could go in a childish manner. Now, this could be connecting dots that don't exist, but it's also, you know, kind of interesting. Yeah, so they're still going through the 51% attack right now. They have said to exchanges, like, look, guys, wait for more confirmations than you normally would. Uh, I know I follow um, Anthony on Twitter, Anthony Lusardi, and he said wait for 2,500 confirmations, and somebody responded, you know, that makes the network fucking useless. And I'm like, well, yeah, it needs to be useless right now. It needs to be, we need to just chill and let them fix this. So one of the proposals that has been submitted uh, for an <laughs> Ethereum, Ethereum Classic Improvement Protocol is to switch to the, the Kek Act 256 algorithm because right now they can just rent the hash power from the regular Ethereum chain and point it directly at Ethereum Classic. And the attack can be like super easy. So if they do that, if they switch to this other algorithm, that won't be an attack vector. Now it, could, it will come with its other, with its own issues, I'm sure. But the, um, you know, we've seen 51% attacks on on other coins. Some coins handled them well, like Zen. Uh, some coins accidentally hard forked their own code, like Verge. Right. So we'll see what happens when uh, when the dust settles. But it's definitely an interesting scenario. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm not familiar with Gate.io, and uh, I'm glad that they're going. You know, they're going to go ahead and admit that you know that loss is going to be on them. A lot of these exchanges, I think they're going to have to take this loss. So I'm, I would be absolutely shocked if Coinbase doesn't take the hit here. Um, but you that's know, that's part of your responsibility as an exchange. That's why yeah. you're charging fees. That's why you're. Mm -hmm. you know, that's why Coinbase gets what three percent or something obnoxious of of uh, deposit fees. And stuff like that. Like you're you're getting all that money because you're required to provide the security. And you need to take care of it. But that doesn't always matter. That doesn't always mean that that's what's going to happen. So I would be very very surprised if they didn't honor this. Um, and and again, I don't know much about you know something like a 
Keck Hack 256 algorithm, like that might as well be a literal another language to me. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are very educated in this space. And as an outsider, you know, we're going through this, you know, learning process of how many attack vectors there are for every single project. And, you know, it's almost like a war zone out there. And the, the competition is so high that I think what we realized about a year ago when the markets were at their, you know, general all time highs is it was bringing the awareness as to what this could be or what it is to more people. And to people like us, that was a great thing because we see what this is. But unfortunately, a lot of other people probably saw it as an opportunity. And, you know, a lot of negative actors have motivation as well as positive actors. So, you know, while we decided to start a podcast, other people may have decided, how can we hack an exchange? Um, you know, but the, <laughs> the stakes are very high. And that's something that, you know, when you mess with money like economy is very complex and you know we're seeing so many like game theory style problems <laughs> where okay this is the problem but every solution has trade-offs and we you know we talk about the trade-offs all the time we like we like having centralized options because they're super convenient i know you're banned from coinbase because you decided to try to log yep. in from cuba but you know i use coinbase still it's a very convenient thing the fees are kind of high but you know when the fees don't matter it's fine you know it's it's something that we have to just accept as part of the process in my opinion and i'm not sure how we can fix it yeah uh i don't i don't know how to fix this i do know that it's not unique to ethereum classic and just in in the our cryptocurrency subreddit this morning when i logged in on my phone when i realized before i realized my internet was out they they said that bitcoin cash could be attacked for a very similar amount of money in a very similar way so it wouldn't be surprising if they were hit as well. There is some serious, uh, some serious security gotten from the network effect of Bitcoin. And despite the fact that we sometimes think that Bitcoin innovates too slowly, they uh, they do have a network that can mm -hmm. actually stop this. <laughs> and of course, my favorite comment from uh, an IOTA supporter named Rogue and E. And the market does not care at all. I don't get it. So uh, first of all, Rogue, I want to remind you of a couple of things. Or, or is that Rogue or Rogue? Okay. Anyway, Rogue. Um, I want to remind you of a, a couple of things here. First, when Verge got fifty-one percent attack, the fucking coin went crazy. Like pumped was the biggest. Uh, it was like number one that day or something ridiculous. Yeah, it was up like eighteen percent or wrong? something. So and. And and it was like in still in the bear market. It was Hold on, I want to I want to ask you something, Brent. Brent, I got to stop you real quick. When you do a fifty one percent attack, you're creating fake transactions, and you're you're selling those coins likely at market rates. I actually think a fifty one percent attack, by definition, because the prices are calculated by the exchanges for the most part, it's the combined exchange values. It actually makes sense that the coin pumps during a fifty one percent attack. No, because they sell uh, all the coins that they steal, right? Like they immediately get those out of the fifty-one percent attacked coin, so it should put downward pressure on. But it, but I just wanted to bring up that Verge did pump right after its fifty-one percent attack, and on this particular instance, I saw this guy's comment, and I was like, "Come on, no way! Is this happening again?" I go look, and Ethereum Classic was the worst performing coin in the top hundred of the last twenty-four hours. So. Bullish or bullshit, the guy's completely wrong. The market <laughs> the, that's great. I totally assumed the same thing you did with, with that comment. I was like, oh, man, that's so interesting. It must have gone up like 12% yesterday. <laughs> yeah. No, it didn't. It didn't. It, uh, the other it thing, was though, the worst performing point at the actually, the, the, the other point that I just thought of, and I'm not sure why I didn't think of this earlier, but um, a lot of the times, you know, with Verge, for example, how many hours after the 51% attack were we looking because if we were 36 yeah, hours true. after, it could have been a couple days. It could have yeah. shot down, and then its recovery is actually getting back to this the flat land or the flat place that it was before, prior to the dump. Possibly, I'm not sure. Yeah, we don't actually have our finger on the pulse of the Verge community, believe it or not. Um, Although, excuse me, oh, I have uh, I have been tipped by the Verge community on Discord. Thank you very much. So for the for the Discord members here, one one time we had to punish Mike in an episode. And his punishment was he had to go into the Verge Discord and get them to send him five Verge, I think. Yeah, it was something like <laughs> 10 cents worth of Verge. 
and I had to do it live during the episode. Yeah, it took him like literal three minutes. Like he got allowed in there, and he was just like, "Hey, y'all, how do I get a tip?" And then somebody tipped him more than five verge. I mean, I was much classier than that. I was, you know, when you're an awesome contributor, people want to reward you. So I just made sure to be an awesome contributor. Yep. All right. So speaking of uh, speaking of random coins that might tip people, where are those banana people at? They used to go crazy. <laughs> I remember that. All right, what sword do you want to move over to next? We kind of messed our order up. That's um, all right. Yeah, we, yeah, we did. Um, Let's do Ohio. <laughs> I knew we had some banana people. There we go. You, you want to do the? Do you want to do the bullish or bullshit, and then move to the? Yeah, let's, to let's the combo two all stories. Right. All right, bullish or bullshit? I liked this one. I'm surprised it got past you whenever you were picking out some articles. I'll just, I'll just put the title in the chat. Bullish or bullshit? Fortnite merch store now accepts Monero as payment option. All right, yeah. So, so what? What bullish or bullshit is? Is uh, so we're so we're gonna react with um, this person dabbing if we think that it's bullish, and we're gonna react with this crying uh, Asian person if we think that it's bullshit. So, uh, <laughs> if you think the this name is, of the article, this is awesome. I I like the live emojis. This is perfect. <laughs> If you, it, basically, on the show all the time, we real like people post these titles to articles, and they're always lying. Like they're always just, not always, but there, so many times the article is misleading with the title. Reddit's it's exceptionally like bad about it. Whatever. <clears throat> so, but you gotta you gotta do some things to get things voted to the top. So, uh, so we like to ask each other bullish or bullshit. So for me personally, um, is Fortnite merch store now accepts Monero as a payment option. Now I actually know this story, so it's not fair for me to to weigh in on this but um i i will tell you that the uh <clears throat> that the more ridiculous the title is the more likely it is to get a bullshit specific argument uh we are getting i'm the only one who's put the dab person in there as the thing to start the voting so i believe that the the public believes that this is a bullshit story mike what do we think so um i'm a little I'm a little uh, nervous about the response I'm going to give because Raisin responded in the chat. Didn't they say it was a mistake? But by everything oh, yeah, that oh, I yeah. was able to acknowledge, this is completely bullish. The screenshot is from... Let me see here. Let me cut and paste this for you. This is yeah, he, he is right. Believe... They did say it was a mistake. I'll say that after. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So I believe this was bullish. But if they listed this as a mistake, so be it. The screenshot here shows an order summary. This that's the this is clearly a mobile phone, I'm pretty sure an, an iPhone. And then at the top it says merch.fortnite.com. So this seems very interesting. It's credit card with normal options, PayPal with some normal options, and then there's a, something called Globe, G O L B E E with the Monero logo. And yeah, so I'm not familiar with that, but I'll, I'll tell you what happened here is they they were accepting Monero for a <laughs> go buy a skin and find out. <laughs> no, true story. I actually Monero. just started Fortnite about a week ago. I have it downloaded. I've played maybe five matches. The game is literally as good as advertised, and it's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. Quasi just said, "Dude, Fortnite's super fun." So yeah, I I tried play. I have this. I, I downloaded it on Switch and like immediately he died. And I play. I'm terrible at shooters anyway. But okay. Enough about Fortnite. Um, you guys can floss till your heart's content. Somebody was spending thirty dollars on a free game, so that's interesting. Um, but they were accepting Monero, not intentionally. They were working with a payment processor that happened to start taking Monero, and therefore that API on all the people who are using that payment processor switched to Monero. So that one of the lead developers went on Twitter and he was like, "Hey, listen, like we." We believe in cryptocurrency. We like the decentralized option. It's nice, but we do have a lot of children and a lot of people who aren't particularly set up to do this right. And we wanted to make sure we were providing the best experience ever for them. Something similar to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But basically, he's like, like, we've disabled the Monero option because we, we feel like we have to be responsible with the people that are on there. And we don't know that exposing them to this is good. So it was a very political statement, and it, 
in my mind, I was like, oh, okay, so we're cool with our kids stealing our parents' credit cards and buying fucking dances on Fortnite, but we're not cool with them figuring out what Monero is because drugs. What? No, <laughs> but, I, no, 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 no. Uh, I think I I took that as more of like we don't need 15 year olds like trying to copy paste, you know, public addresses for Monero and like Bitcoin and mixing them up and causing a huge slew of like user issues. Yeah. I, you know, so yeah, they probably would have had some more user issues, but here's the thing, man, who do you think is more likely to fuck up Monero, a 12 year old or like a 45 year old? A 45 year old like playing just... Fortnite is a favorite over a 12 year old, or probably a favorite over a 16 year old, even in a gaming situation. Like if they're playing Fortnite, know, like I don't know, man. Like you're pretty, you're pretty set up. I've been trying to build this computer to be able to play Fortnite, and it's been an absolute disaster for me. So like people that are already past this step, I gotta figure they're a lot smarter than I am. Yeah. Well, so here's, I think if it was Bitcoin. We might not have been in this scenario. It just happened to be Monero. So I think they think that it is associated with with bad uh, things right now. And it sucks that Monero is associated with 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 uh, uh, you know drugs and stuff like that. Well, Monero people are always going to be level Mar- one. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to get into something later in the episode that I think will actually kind of explain why Monero has that <clears throat> stigma, but. And, and I'll wait until later to talk about that. But uh, it would have been really cool if Fortnite was taking any cryptocurrency because that's <laughs> the definition of mass adoption is like an actual transacted game. Like people are talking about like, oh, my God, it's Pornhub is taking cryptocurrency. It's amazing. <clears throat> Don't really buy porn that much. If you're on Pornhub, guess what? You get all your porn for free. Like if you were really crazy and you want to splurge, and get some, you know, 60 FPS and get longer than 10 minute videos. Okay, yeah, you can pay if you want, but for the most part, most people pay get it for free. On Fortnite, tons of people pay for this shit, and they, you know, I would significantly more people pay for Fortnite skins than you know human skins on I, Pornhub. I mean, so the porn business uh, is I, way I that would have been really good for the porn business is way <laughs> bigger than the than the gaming i think i mean i feel like it has to be the porn business is bigger but i think the percentage of people that do it that that do transactions is significantly higher than in fortnite because well the percentage i think of fortnite people i think like 100 percent of the people in the world watch porn and you know less than one percent of them probably pay for it so okay but i guess like I feel like I'm if you're go- if you're gonna oh really you're making up that 100 percent of people watch porn. I didn't think you were making that up. I thought that was a real statistic. Uh, it's a real statistic. Like, but okay, Kareem so, would be so like, yelling at me right now. Oh yeah, Kareem would be having an aneurysm. Um, I guess the point that I that is coming to me off the top of my head is that like I feel like the people that pay for porn, it's gonna be a monthly subscription. It's gonna be more money than. Then Fortnite, I feel like it's going to be some microtransactions. Even though thirty bucks is not a microtransaction, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, it, it's interesting to see. Like, it's and this is also yeah. just one game. Like, who knows? Like, there's so many games out there too. Looks like Quasi just looked it up too. Epic Games is worth between five and eight billion, and Pornhub is worth about four. So just straight off, you know, the just straight off the company valuations, we're talking about significantly more here. Um, yeah, and there would have been a lot of dollar, two dollar transactions. It, Monero might not have even. Well, actually, Monero's fees are super low now that they put bulletproofs in. So, um, Monero was a great choice. Nano would have been a great choice. Um, you know, at any of the you know, Dash would have been a great choice. Any of these would have been a fine choice, and it would have really helped adoption. I don't know about price for whichever one it was. So, I wish they'd. I wish they'd stuck with it. I wish. Um, yeah, I wish they'd let that go and and le- let some people learn more about crypto that way. But the the generation below us, Mike, cares a lot more about crypto than. We do. Absolutely, and and that's a big part of you know why we're gonna have to wait a while for the future. And I'm guessing you just dropped your mic or something. Yeah, I just did. Sorry. I got back. <laughs> All right, so I, I guess even in hindsight, I'm not sure if this is bullish or bullshit, but I mean, they did it's take both. it for a little it while. It was originally <laughs> bullish, and then they took it down. So it was. It was I'm take. I'm. I'm stamping this as bullish. I like that they're at least dabbling, and it's almost one of those like, what if this is one of those intentional whoopsies? Like, 
like how do we gain mass adoption in gaming? Let's like put it out there and just let people talk about it for a little while so we can introduce it later on. Who knows? No, it's probably le just a legitimate because they would have done they would have done something else. They would have tried to mess with their own coin or they would have partnered with one of the coins that might be paying gamers to do it. They would have done something with Dash or whatever. Or they would have uh, uh you know, they, they would have asked Verge for four million dollars and Verge would have <laughs> given it to him right around tax time this year. All right. Uh, do you want to move into Coinbase or Peterson? Yeah, let's talk about. Let, we'll start with Peterson. Let's start All with right. Peterson. We'll talk about him, mm -hmm. and then and then we'll move on to Coinbase, both regarding censor. Yeah, this is. Uh, I have no idea where this is going to go because people are very opinionated on Jordan Peterson. But here we go. I actually um, don't know who he is. So. Yeah, I have only discovered him maybe in the last six months, um, but I personally am a big fan. I think he. He spreads a very positive image. Um, he's he's very polarizing, you know, kind of like a lot like you in a sense where you kind of tell it like it is. And if people don't like it, like kind of tough shit, you know, it's it's just you, you're not afraid to say things that people don't want to hear. He's kind of the same way. Um, so just a little background on him. He's a clinical psychologist in Canada and he's also a professor of psychology at the University of Toronto. And so he's wow, doing Star this. Trek reference. What's up, DJ? Hmm. Uh, sorry, I was commenting on the chat. Keep going. Um, I've I've listened to him. Uh, I got introduced to him through the Joe Rogan podcast, which is probably how a lot of people got it, got their first introductions to him. He's um, pretty strong politically, and, and Brent, you're familiar with the fact that I'm not very strong politically. I'm pretty weak in that area. I don't study it very much. Um, I tend to pass my you know questions off to others and try to build off from there. But I ran. Yeah. And and I really have liked what I've heard from him so far. Um, some of the things that I've noticed, he, he stands out a lot against political correctness. And um, and he does have a very strong Christian view that, in my opinion, he doesn't necessarily overly force on people. He doesn't expect everyone to be Christian with him. But th those are just some of my thoughts. Those are opinions, whatever. Um, so let's get into what happened. His, his daughter was banned for three months from YouTube after uploading a video that, according to her and um, her father, was basically a question and answer, and it seemed like a very innocent video that should not have you know, been at this, issue, not had issue with. Um, some backstory here, Peterson is also, uh, he's also quit Patreon because of their censorship of certain types of people, even those that he doesn't agree with, as long as they are, you know, handling their situations in a reasonable and respectful manner. YouTube has crossed the line, has given him issues with his videos and other people's censorship, and he stands out very much for this. He uploaded his entire video library to bit.tube, which is a decentralized uh, YouTube. So that itself is a huge, um, a huge signal, a huge, you know, kind of ideological stance. He's also said that he plans on creating a decentralized Patreon, which this that got my attention right away because, you know, Patreon takes a ton of fees. They're you know, they're in, they're a new proof of concept for a new type of, you know, way of exchanging money. But you know, they're still kind of. I wouldn't say they're that new, but but Mike, why don't we not talk too much shit about Patreon because they're keeping our show afloat? Please donate to our Patreon. You can check it out on CryptoBasicPodcast.com. Indeed, yeah. No, we 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 are on Patreon, and I I understand it is a centralized force, but the crypto community is going to be for and against it in their own ways, and you know we don't expect anybody to just blindly go for it. Um, the podcast community is really ingrained with Patreon. That's the thing. If it was, if we were uh, like a crypto YouTube channel first and foremost, we may choose to go with Bitbacker or something like that, but. Uh, the podcast community really does rally around Patreon, and it does have a really good user experience. So we'll be looking for something else to, to come out that's more crypto-related or, or more free market. But for now, we're we're kind of going with the best option that's available. Um, where it, and you know maybe maybe we get censored at some point. I don't know, but I look forward to the day that a centralized source tries to censor Brent. It's always a good time. <laughs> So, Fire brimstone, baby. so I did a little digging around his Twitter account just because I wanted to see this was a couple days ago. 
Um, I went on bit.tube and there were 21 preview videos on display. Seven of them were from Jordan Peterson. So I'm not sure if that is a, more of a sign of him dominating the platform or if it just understands the wants and needs of me, even though it was my first time visiting the site. I don't know which one is more likely, but I thought that was particularly interesting. He's probably just super famous, so they so they've made it the idea to push. Well, if they're decentralized, they may not even have that option. I, I don't know why you would. Maybe it was just they were the recent additions. Yeah, I was thinking it was either one or the other. I wasn't sure which. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, yeah. doo -doo -doo -doo. So there was one funny comment that I want to share. Doo -doo -doo -doo. From. Uh, Muff420, it was basically, they were talking about why people aren't a big fan of his, and he's like, hey, it was similar to me, he reminded me, he's like, I've only listened to him on Rogan, and I couldn't figure out why people are so strongly opinion on him, um, and he says, it makes sense, and he's like, I liked Rick and Morty until I saw them stomping on McDonald's counters demanding Szechuan sauce, I don't blame Roland or Herman for that. <laughs> so I, I thought that was really funny, like, yeah, like, I don't know, people are... They have their own motives, you know, sometimes a big company like Rick and Morty is going to have a huge bit about the McDonald's Szechuan sauce, but like, it was absolutely hilarious, like, who cares, like, these are, these are people, they have lives, um, they're doing it the way that they want, and, I don't know, it's, it's hard to, Wait. it's hard to defend somebody that is very publicly spoken out against, and it's just somebody that I happen to like and respect. Is Jordan Peterson's daughter, uh, over 18? I believe so. I just, I looked at her profile. She looked like a young adult. I mean, he's in his 50s. Okay. Um, hang on, my. <laughs> uh, uh, just one second here. <laughs> Sorry. <Hold on. laughs> the, the headset that I was using just died, so that was interesting. Okay. I can hear, I can hear you. You're good. Okay. So... One thing I will say is that I I, w I saw this post get to the top of Reddit. It was about these fucking weird videos with kids in them. Uh, I didn't even know what this was called, but it's called or it's called ASMR, and it's like it. It's, <laughs> I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know. I don't know. Is, but I don't like, know where you're going with this. It's these kids saying shit like really weird and they're like 12 or 13 and it seems like fucking weird sexual and they're on YouTube getting millions and millions of views. So if his if his daughter was under 18, I could see them have been erring on the plus side of banning this stuff and getting it off there on a decentralized video platform. It'd be very difficult to stop that. So, you know, I it's. It's just super weird. Like, yeah. It, it <laughs> the the chat is like going crazy about ASMR. They're like, dude, I don't it's super weird. And <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, point is, it sucks. Cent like centralized services censoring people that they don't agree with because of their political ideals or because of random reasons that may have nothing to do with the platform that they're on stinks. And I hate seeing it, but at the same time, it, it's, you know, we see stuff like the weird fucking ASMR kids uh, or the there was like another big video by the same guy that was showing like these this weird like Asian family where it would be like the mom playing with her kids. But obviously the point of the video was like upskirt shots, but it was like a mom like hanging out with her kids. So it was like fucking super weird. It was like <laughs> Uh, this reminds me of, I watched a John Oliver recently on smoking and they're showing a video of like a, a Asian boy that was like very overweight and couldn't have been more than like six years old, just like chain smoking cigarettes and not giving a damn. Dude. It was like really like eye opening because the whole purpose of that yeah. video was like how the, the American smoking companies just basically have abandoned the U S and are just like funding huge campaigns in like all these like small Asian and South American communities and just like completely getting entire communities addicted to cigarettes. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. All right. So we're going to save the, the longer overarching censorship 
slash what happens with other platforms uh, until we do the next story. But Mike, you found like a cool little segue into our next story. Yes, here it is. So I, I mentioned I was browsing P Peterson's Twitter account and he actually mentioned crypto in a more recent tweet about the, the story that Brent's about to cover. I thought this was particularly interesting. I also saw, as I read the comments in here, uh, Anthony Pompliano actually gets in here and is trying to get Peterson on for an interview. So if Peterson ends up on, on the Pomp show, that would be a huge win for the crypto community. Yeah, or we could just get him on our show. Let's just do it that way. Yeah, Easier. that's probably better. Better. We're, we're so much better. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so he so he basically pointed out the next thing that I'm going to talk about. And the, the post on on uh, Reddit, if, if you toss that in there, Mike, was, um, was Coinbase GFY. And seriously, GFY, right? So... <laughs> They they term Coinbase terminated the merchant account for Andrew Torba, who is Gab's founder, and Gab is interesting. Gab I don't know anything like, about either of these things, so explain it to so, me like I'm five. Gab is a free speech centric platform that is kind of like a Twitter clone. They they allow you to put more characters in your posts, but it's it's a social network that kind of promotes itself as we're all about free speech you, you know we're not going to censor you kind of thing uh, i don't know that they're decentralized but they certainly you know do you know ask for people like that to come on um they're they are here's here's the thing about it and 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 we're going to get into this but they're super toxic they are like really bad the the pittsburgh shooter posted on there before he made his attack um there they also have a couple other i think high profile issues with with hate crimes and that kind of thing which obviously has nothing to do with the company so coinbase banning the company is seen as like a centralized kind of attack remember they did this with wikileaks too like last year and we need to understand that while we're putting our trust in these centralized exchanges, they are going to continue to do this. And, it, and it's because they have a responsibility to their shareholders. Coinbase is a, is a company here in the United States. And if there are people posting on a platform and then going and shooting up churches, they are going to think negatively about that, even though it's not an issue for the whole platform. But what's happening? Like, why... Like, we know that it would be better if there was no censorship and then there was just, like, upvotes and downvotes and and people could kind of handle it themselves, which is what Reddit originally was, right? But there's also Vote, which is a Reddit option where Reddit started censoring things, too. They started getting rid of what they considered hate subs, like fat people hate or um, things like that. And they started to get rid of some of these pieces of free speech because they have more shareholders now. They have... Uh, more responsibility to their board, and people see it as an attack on the the right wing conservative way of thinking. And I, obviously, some of these crazy people are right wing, but I imagine there are some crazy left wing people that are banned too from these platforms. But what happens is something like Gap is marketing itself as the free speech alternative to the people who are getting banned from the other platforms. So what happens when you have something that is a platform for people who have been banned from other platforms? You know, like it ends uh, yeah, up being toxic very, very quickly. So <clears throat> if you market yourself as we are the alternative to this platform who is banning people like Alex Jones, rally behind us because Alex Jones shouldn't be banned. Alex Jones is a fucking piece of shit. He should be banned. So, like, you can you can all go rally there and be on this platform with other people who think the same, so you're creating these echo chambers. Yes, that's exactly and what Gab I was going to say. Gab really does push this point home, and that is why people will go to Gab. That's why people will go to vote. There are – what you actually need to do is <clears> create the a better alternative to Twitter. You need to create a better alternative to Facebook that doesn't predicate itself on – 
uh, oh, we're a free speech bastion or anything like that. It's not going to work anymore because the free speech movement has been usurped by these people that are getting banned from other places because they feel like their rights are being infringed on. But the companies like Coinbase have a... <coughs> excuse me. Companies like Coinbase are totally allowed to do this. They're private companies. They're centralized companies. You need to understand that. What we need <coughs> is a decentralized option that's better than the other options that doesn't market itself as a decentralized option. Oh, and obviously my favorite comment on this was the guy who posted, what does GFY mean? <laughs> <laughs> how do you, like, how do you not know that one? He knew, that's, that's like saying LOL. Problem, it was funny. Yeah, it was funny. It was it was funny that it was in the title because I, I would imagine that Reddit would not allow you to put, go fuck yourself in the title. Right. But uh, it was it was definitely a cool comment. I don't know whoever said that. Um, uh, I'm so torn so, on this. Like, I, I am too. Here's the thing. I think that Alex Jones should have his platform. I don't think he should be banned from things uh, until you know he's causing a problem, <clears throat> and until he's actually calling for violence and that kind of thing. But he should have his platform to talk, and I don't like the censorship. But at the same time, I completely, if I was running Coinbase, would not want to be associated with Gab even a little bit. It's the same reason like people aren't don't want to be associated with Monero. Monero is a great option for buying drugs. That doesn't mean it's the only thing that it's good for, but it is better than Bitcoin because it's not traceable. So people will so th things like the Silk Road alternatives are using it, and it is therefore getting that stigma. So you have to be careful because once you get the stigma, then you don't have other people performing mass adoption of your thing. If Twitter was the place where you know white supremacists went and talked, it wouldn't have become adopted, but it became the place where celebrities went and said shit, so you got to go on there and talk to them. Um, yeah, it is very... that I am torn because I hate seeing anyone censored like this, but at the same time, see the need for it, and realize that these platforms are going to continue to have this problem if this is who they're trying to attract. So <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is that, you know, I've kind of developed this view of the world where as a whole, you know, most people are kind of neutral to a lot of things. There's like a 10% group on each side that is very extreme. So we take, uh, we take something like crypto, all the people in this, you know, events voice chat that are just hanging out with us on a Tuesday morning, you know, wherever they are, you guys are all in the 10% of the positive Bitcoin side. Like you guys are the exception. We're all early adopters. This is, this is what we're here for. But, you know, when you think about the other type, the other side of this 10%, this is where the problems come from. You know, I mentioned earlier that, you know, when there's, when the incentives are large enough, you know, you have good actors and bad actors. And I feel like um, the incentives for a lot of these people are to make money. And now we have a set of communication rules that have never existed before. I am communicating through an app into a microphone on my desk and a bunch of people just showed up willing to listen to me just because of something that I have to say. This is a positive echo chamber that we're creating because you guys hopefully trust that we're trying to deliver decentralized news to you in a certain kind of way. You know, so... When there are other sides of this, you know, I don't know where to draw the line. It's very difficult. I think you just have to accept that, you know, free speech does not give you the ability to, like, really cause problems. And you can't create, you know, chaos. You can't create destruction. You can't create, you know, shootings and whatnot. Uh, I think the entire realization of Donald Trump getting elected, I think a lot of people are a lot meaner than we want to believe. Free speech has basically not been free speech for a long time. It's created a lot of bitter individuals. It's created a lot of people that don't feel like they have an option, feel like they don't have a voice. And now over the past few years, social media has given them a voice that they've never had before without the restrictions and responsibility that come with that voice. So Yeah, and I want to be clear that both sides of this are really bad. You can see this on, on Tumblr. Uh, the Like Gab would be the, the far right issue and tumblr would be the far left where you have you know people on people on gab are calling for you know bring back the holocaust and people on tumblr are saying 
if you tell me that a man is a better boxer than a woman, then you should die. <laughs> right. So we know that both of those extremes are wrong. Like we know that we want to ban somebody from our platform that starts posting that they should kill all the Jews, the Jews. We know that we want to ban somebody from our platform that says that if you say a female is a better boxer, or is a, a male is a better boxer than a female, then you should die. Or if you use the words male and female at all, then you should die. <laughs> like that, we know the extremes are wrong. So the ability to get rid of those is important. That's why we need. A, I, how much better of a place would Facebook be if there was a fucking downvote button, man? Yeah, but it's against the model. I mean, like I agree, it would be a much better place, but we're never going to get it. So that we just wanted to have a, 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 it was a little bit more serious than our usual discussions in here. So if this is your first time, normally we're talking about like, you know, I told stories about white poops that I had one time and stuff like that. So we try to be funnier, but I just thought it was important to, to point out that this is why this is happening. It's not happening because free speech is bad. It's happening because if the people who thought it was okay to, to, talk shit in a movie theater while a movie's on be like, oh, look at that. He's got a thing on his face. <laughs> and everybody else in the theater is like, yo, shut the fuck up. We're trying to watch a movie. If there was a movie theater that opened that specifically marketed to those people and was like, come here, you can talk during the movie, the experience there would be awful, even for the people who wanted to talk during the movie, <laughs> but they probably wouldn't admit it. That's a really good That's a really good analogy. I like that a lot. That's. But so, then again, as a society, where do we police it? Do, do we let talking movie people have their talking movie experience like and then you know hopefully they see everybody else like talking and then realize oh maybe i'm the shithead here i don't know like i, I don't know how to fix it there so i i went down another rabbit hole once i started looking at this and there is a i guess a, a psychological or not psychological a uh, philosophical term known as the paradox of tolerance or the paradox of intolerance and it is that in if if a society is completely tolerant of everything, then eventually those that are intolerant will run the society. Um, and you and it's so hard to find where it starts and where it ends because if nobody's intolerant, you don't have a problem of you don't have this problem. But if if one person is, but everybody else isn't, and they're the only ones that are saying their bad thing, then eventually they will be able to control the conversation. So it's very interesting. There's a huge rabbit hole there for all of this stuff. Um, and hey, that's it. That, I, we've got a couple of things in the chat that we should respond to, but I just wanted to bring... Oh, Zar, please tell me that's not true. Zar just posted in the chat. No. What, what do you think about the Justin Sun new ICO? Come on. Come on. There's no way Justin Sun is running a new ICO. Can, no, I, I haven't links. seen this. Immediately. We, th this is a great troll if he isn't. Quasi, <laughs> uh, qu <laughs> yes, this would be an amazing troll. Oh, my God. Quasi, honestly, Charlie Lee predicting the bottom, I'm not really sure. Like, eh, we might not be at the bottom. Who knows? Yeah, and Charlie Lee did – he had a couple of tweets there where he was like – he sold at the top. He explained why. He said, "If you can't stomach this as a bottom, you're in. You're 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 in for it." I think Charlie Lee is just reasonable. I mean, I've listened to him talk. He's saying it's not like he's saying Litecoin is going to this. Yeah. He's saying it could, mm -hmm. and we all agree that it could. We it could go lower than that, and he would probably even say that if you talk to him now. He watch. <laughs> I remember watching an interview with him versus Roger Veer on a cruise, and everything that Charlie Lee said was right, but he didn't. He didn't win any of the conversations. Yeah, it, like Ch Roger Ver was significantly more charismatic than than Charlie Lee during the interview, even though he was saying everything that was wrong. So he was it, it was it was interesting. But Charlie Lee is uh, is a really interesting person, fun person to follow on Twitter. I understand that people got some vitriol towards him because he sold at the top, but he said he did. He's like, guys, I'm out, and he didn't say he was selling because he thought he was at the top. He's saying like every time I make a tweet it changes the price and i'm not about that life so um uh so oh my god bit jesus christ and ah okay well it's an ico on the on tron the, network if you want to hear our thoughts on justin sun collecting more money from the community please join 
us on our or on our uh, flagship Friday this week because I will go ballistic on him. Um, yeah, I'm sure this will make the, the flagship for sure. Yeah, I he he almost won the award for biggest douche in the cryptoverse, but was uh, edged out by somebody that I won't say. In case you want to go find out for yourself, um, BTT will be a TRC10 token comparable to the ERC20 tokens that run on top of Ethereum. Come on. Yeah, well, the, be careful not to you know say it's like an ERC twenty token because CryptoCander got attacked for saying that on Neblio. Uh, she, she said it was similar. I guess like, not the same at all. It's so it's so different, and it basically was the same. Um, all right. So um, Elliot was asking about a portfolio competition. We'll probably do something. We made that one too long, and there wasn't that much interest. We only got we had thousands of listeners. Only like thirty people signed up for the contest, so it wasn't. Uh, wasn't particularly engaging, and we talked a lot about really it. It was early fun. Into our show, though, we did it in like yeah. February or March. We were still really young. <clears throat> it was fun to watch Mike, like, have to chug condiments, which actually came from this Discord. Uh, the reason Mike had to That's do right. that was because because that guy who said he would drink a bottle of ketchup. yeah, he was going to drink a bottle of ketchup if Bitcoin went below four thousand, and then he went missing in action. And right around the time that that popped up was when I had to do a punishment. And that's that's where we actually got the idea from here. It's a good good call, Brent. Yep, Thunder Thunderpants makes uh, tweets about his tweets changing the price of Litecoin, sells all his Litecoin, and tweets about it. Uh, he got so much hate for that too, and and. You know, think what you. I think it was right. I mean, that was that was the. He's still working on the project. Like, look, man, I sold money was, around that. I sold crypto around that time too, because every time I looked at my portfolio, I didn't believe what was happening. Like, <laughs> yeah. you can't blame I, anybody. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I can't. Uh, can't Except hate Charlie. Like he doesn't he, believe it. He doesn't need another ICO. Yeah. Oh, just no. oh boy. There. There. I, I can't wait for that rabbit hole. I've got uh, I've got that to look forward to. So um, we I mean we're, we can be calling this Tron second ICO the same way that that stupid substratum shit was running a second ICO. Well, to, they canceled that though, right? Oh yeah, they canceled it. Yeah, Thank sorry. So for those of, for those of you that like to listen to us talk about, I I, I didn't intend to talk about substratum at any point. I don't think we're going to continue to talk about them. We think we think their shit their um, their community has. Attacked us for Let's, hey, shit. we have a problem with Reddit and Substratum. Let's just bring it up in here. Maybe somebody has a solution for us. I don't think there is. I looked it up. There's nothing we can really do. Ba- basically, the the Substratum community knows when I post on Reddit and downvote me. Um, there, and the reason I know that is because when it when we finally started releasing some bad things about Substratum and they noticed us, um, is when all of my posts started going to zero. And when I say all of my posts, I mean like. I posted about my poop, it went to zero. I posted about like stuff in fantasy football, it went to zero. Like they're um, they have a clear notification when I post something to download it. So or maybe even something set up to automatically do it. And I, without changing my account, I don't really know what to do with that. And my account has some good karma on it. So uh, it makes up for your lack of real life karma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Pro said you can hit up the admins. I did. I hit up the admins. They said they've already taken care of it. I haven't really noticed a uh, a difference, but uh, you know, I I don't know. I, my guess is they have a lot of different people that are able to do it. Um, they are probably pretty adept at uh, trying to silence anybody that says anything bad. Yeah, they probably had. To, they probably have a lot of experience silencing people talking shit about them. He. <laughs> what? No. What? So I so Thunderpants just said you guys remember the live stream that Justin did that resulted in a forty percent drop in Tron. He started panicking and called Donald Trump an idiot, which sent the price I even lower. This link I don't remember that. Yeah, if there's a link, I'd love to. I'd love to look at that. But um, oh, if man. Donald saying Donald Trump's an idiot requires sends your crypto price or your stock price down, it makes complete sense that our podcast doesn't. Uh, you know, isn't worth anything. <laughs> uh, Indeed. You know what? Speaking of free speech, there was Donald Trump is speaking tonight, and he and the Democrats were saying like, "Oh my God, how can he? How can these news networks, co- you know, watch him speak and not give us airtime?" I'm like, 
what are you talking about? Like, let the guy speak. Every time he speaks, like, he sounds dumber. So, And there's a good chance he'll implicate himself in a crime, so let him go. <laughs> Uh, Fonte, um, this is not financial advice. We are not financial advisors. This is for entertainment purposes only. Yes. This own is... Tron at your own risk. <laughs> it, you know what? I, I want to clarify our thoughts on Tron. We, we, we think that Justin's son is, is douche. We think that it's very likely that the network is not going to succeed. But at the same time, they may have raised enough money to make it work. And if they did, great. The last thing in the world we want is any project to take all this money in and not produce something. So the you know when when people are talking about EOS failing, like we don't want we don't want to see EOS fail. Uh, we would like to have a centralized option out there for cryptocurrency going around and doing its thing. We we want it to be there. If it fails, then that means all the money that was raised is just gone. So. We want, yes. all, we want all these projects to su succeed. We don't so know that they will. I feel like we have this category that is is kind of small, and I feel like they're in different tiers. I feel like Ripple, and that was mentioned a little bit earlier in here. I forget who said that. Who's, who brought up Ripple? Anywho, um, somebody brought up Ripple, and basically, we we don't condemn it. We don't we don't love it. We kind of just don't think it's a crypto, and we just think it's very centralized, and it's another one of those projects we want to succeed, but we don't really know what to expect. Um, EOS, you know, they raised so much money similar to Tron, similar to Ripple, like, they're so big and they took in so much resources that I'm kind of rooting for them just because of all the people that were, that bought into the hype and, you know, the Tron fanboys as we like to call them, yeah, they can be annoying but, like, they're people too, unfortunately and, like, I'd rather them not get torched by, you know, some cult leader Yeah, and, and there's fanboys of every, of, of every coin I mean, it, even the coins that we like are no exception uh, but and <laughs> if you're ever wondering about whether we're fanboys of a coin specifically, and we won't say anything bad about our project, our favorite coin is Cardano, and also Charles Hoskinson was nominated for one of our bad categories in our Crypto Awards, <laughs> and uh, and also we we love Horizon, and we we literally had their creator on the show to be like, why the fuck did you partner up with Pornhub when Verge and Tron were the other two people that did? So we try to be as objective as we can, even with coins that we do like. And everybody just needs to remain skeptical. We're here because we believe the future is bright. I don't know when that future is going to be. And, you know, just, just keep on doing your research, doing your homework and making the best choices you can. <clears throat> Yep. Stay stay skeptical. That I promise you there's a trade-off with whatever coin your favorite coin is. Understand what that trade-off is, be comfortable with it. Um, and and then uh, and if it's still in the space where it's centralized, if it's still getting ready to be part of the decentralized community where you have to trust the team, for now, make sure you trust that team and look for the red flags. I'm, I'm um, going to answer Assassin's question here. This We're going to do a little show of our own just because, you know, we've done about 30-ish, a little more than 30 of the projects. We've covered a one-on-one episode on them and where we tried to just only tackle the pros and cons of that project next, you know, within itself. Um, some of our episodes are a little old, like uh, Nano is probably a fairly old episode because Brent liked it quite... We've we've been in since it was Ryblox. Um, but... Yeah, yeah I, we, I do like Nano. I, I think Nano is probably one of the best transactional coins. Uh, they the network has its problems. There's there's no monetary incentive for anybody to upkeep that network, so it's kind of tough. But the it and there's no monetary incentive for people to continue to develop on it. But the transactions are instant. Um, they are a perfect option for microtransactions. All right, it is noon. I do have to leave. So I yep, have to cut it short. Noon. noon is when we turn into pumpkins, and then I cook Mike into a pie and enjoy myself. Put some cinnamon on me. And... <laughs> All, All right, guys, that's going to do it for the Crypto Basic Podcast. This was the weekly RCC Roundup, every week at Tuesday, 11 a.m. till noon. Anything else? We'll see you next week. No, no, we'll see you next week. Uh, more than likely, Kareem will be with us. Be, uh, you know, maybe not. But oh man, talks about Alibaba and Microsoft Plus partnerships. Jeez. 
All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. See ya. Later, Brent.